I got the idea for this tutorial while watching a movie the other day. In the opening credits, there was a production company that had an interesting logo. When hit by spotlights from different angles, the logo would project shadows that resulted in different letters. After giving it some thought, I realized that the trick was actually fairly easy to duplicate. In this tutorial, you will create such a logo, in your case for an imaginary production company named ECG. The tutorial is mainly about the creation of the logo, but you still need to work a bit of lighting and materials to make it look interesting. Start a new scene. Make sure the renderer is set to scan line if it's not already the case by default. You won't need any fancy lighting or material tricks for this project, so we'll keep it light. Set the render output to HDTV in 1280 x 720 resolution. Enable save frames in the perspective view. To create the logo, you will work within a 5x5 five five grid. In the top view, zoom in on the center of the world. You'll create the letter E in the bottom left quadrant. Enable snap mode. Right click the icon and set it to grid points only. Go to create shapes and select the line tool. Set it to work in corner to corner mode. Draw the letter E by confining yourself to a 5x5 five five grid. Make sure you close the spline when you loop back to the starting point. In the front view, create the letter C in the grid's top left quadrant. Again, confine yourself to a 5x5 five five grid. In the left view, create the letter G in the top right quadrant. Theoretically, you could use any letters you want, but be advised that some letters work better than others. Curved and sloped letters would yield artifacts in the shadows. When you're done, disable snap mode. If you need to, change the wire colors to make the letters stand out more. You can also use the G toggle to disable the grid at this point. All three letters sit within a 5x5 five five grid which makes them 50x50 50 50 units in length and width. Now you need to give them a height of 50 units as well. Select all three letters and apply an extrude modifier to them. Set the extrude value to 50. The three extruded letters are now sharing the same space. Select any of the letters and go to Create Geometry. In the drop-down list, Choose Compound Objects and then click Pro Boolean. Set the Operation Mode to Intersection and then click the Start Picking buttons. Select the two other letters in the scene. Right click to end the operation. That's it. Your logo is fairly done. If you wish, you can improve on it slightly. For example, you could convert it to an editable poly, select all edges, and round them off a little bit using the chamfer command. You could also readjust the pivot point in case you need to animate the logo. This is done in the hierarchy panel. First align it to the world and then center it to the object. You still need a surface to project the shadows onto, so you create a floor and a couple of walls. An easy way to do that is to create a box convert it to a poly object, and then delete the three sides you don't need. Give it a minimal thickness using the shell modifier. Finally, you can move the logo up so that it's not sitting on the floor. Move it up about 75 units. For the lights, you will use standard direct lights. You could use spotlights, but spotlights would have to be positioned very far from the logo to work well. Otherwise, the projected shadows would look wrong as the spot picks up the extension of the letters. Choose the free direct light instead and create one in the left view centered on the logo. In the top view, Move it left of the logo so it can affect it. In the Modify panel, enable Shadows in Shadow Map Mode. These should be enough for this project. In the Shadow Map Rams rollout, 
Set the size to 1000 and the sample range to 8. These will increase the quality of the shadows while keeping them soft. If you prefer crisp shadows, then use ray trace shadows instead of shadow maps. Adjust the hotspot falloff values to focus the beam on the logo only. Test render the scene. If you need to, adjust the shadow softness, play with the sample range value. A value of 6 to 8 should be adequate here. Create two more lights, one at the top view and one in the front. Aside from enabling shadows, the rest of the parameters should still be active from the last light you created. If you need to, adjust the position of the box to get a better look at the shadows. Adjust your perspective view. Once you have an angle that you like, press Ctrl C to create a camera. Again, feel free to make last minute adjustments to the positions of the logo or the box to better frame the camera view. Animate the camera. Extend the animation to 450 frames. That's about 15 seconds for an NTSC signal. Go to frame 360 and select both the camera and its target. Right click the slider bar and create position keys for both. Enable auto key mode and go to frame 0. Move the camera and its target to get a shot inside the logo. Play the animation. You need to slow down the first bit of travel. Go to frame 160 and bring the camera closer to the logo. Adjust the target accordingly. Play the animation. You now have a nice bit of camera travel. Finally, work out some materials and textures for the project. You are encouraged to be creative here, so you don't need to follow these next steps to the letter. If you decide to follow the tutorial, you will need the two bitmaps you downloaded for this project. Keeping it simple, use the brass metal texture as a diffuse map in a standard material, and apply it to the walls and floor. For the logo itself, you will simulate a metallic look by using a standard material. Apply the tin foil texture as a reflection map, and perhaps maybe blur the bitmap a little bit. Also, make the material shinier. Make its diffuse color a lot darker. Apply the material to the logo and test render the scene. If you want, you can give the logo a tint by using a diffuse color of your choice. Just make sure you keep it dark. Once it is done, save your file to disk. You can also render the finished animation to disk or view the provided result. In this tutorial, you have designed and created a company logo that, when hit by light from different angles, projects shadows of different letters. In the process, you have dabbled with different aspects of 3D workflow from modeling to texturing to lighting and animation. Hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial. We'll see you next time.